So um, in the previous video, what we were looking at was the overview of how sucrose and amino acids were transported along the phloem from a source to a sink. And in that particular video, I did mention a process known as active loading. And I did say that active loading is a slightly complex process that deserves its own video. By the way, for this video, we are just going to be focusing on the active loading of sucrose because that's what you require to know for the exam. I know that the source produces amino acids and also sucrose molecules, but usually in the purpose of the exam, uh, they would just focus on how sucrose is transported in the flow up. Uh, but if a question asks you how amino acids were transported, it's the same way anyway. So active loading basically means the sucrose is transported from the source to the phloem sieve tube element. In this case here, what we are going to talk about is the process of active loading. What exactly happens during this time? Because it's not just like a simple diffusion that happens from a high to low concentration. The process is a little bit more complicated than that. So remember, in the process of active loading, it involves three places. It involves the mesophyll cells, which is the source. Uh, the source meaning to say it produces the sucrose and amino acids or it gives the sucrose and amino acids. And it also involves the companion cell and the phloem sieve tube element. Remember, the companion cell and the phloem sieve tube element make up the phloem tissue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw out the mesophyll cell. I'm just going to make it bigger and I'm going to represent the mesophyll cell in green, the green color cell. And I'm also drawing out the companion cell right here. Adjacent to the companion cell is the phloem sieve tube element. And how do I know that's the phloem sieve tube element? You can see the sieve plates and the lack of cytoplasm. It has very little cytoplasm, not as much as the companion cells. Now, I know that the mesophyll cell and the companion cell are supposed to have organelles like mitochondria, uh, nucleus, rough ER and such. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to remove all the organelles because it will become too messy if I were to draw out all the organelles. But bear in mind that the mesophyll cell and companion cells do have important organelles, all right? So, in this case, what else we are going to do is, we are going to focus on the companion cell. You see, on the cell surface membrane of the companion cell, it will have two transport proteins. The first transport protein it has is a hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter, which is a type of carrier protein. Now, if you remember, going back to chapter 4, I did mention a little bit about co-transporters. I will put a link up at the top right corner of the screen if you would like to go and visit that video again. Co-transporter molecules are just basically transport proteins that transport two substances at the same time. In this case, it is transporting hydrogen ion and sucrose at the same time. Not just one, by the way. And this co-transporter protein follows the hydrogen ion concentration gradient, not the sucrose concentration gradient. What I mean by that, I'm going to explain that in a while, but uh, just, just hold on. The second transport protein that the companion cell also has is the proton pump, or also a hydrogen ion pump. In this video, I'll use the word proton or hydrogen ion interchangeably because they're the same things. Protons are just hydrogen ions. And in the exam, you can use the word hydrogen ion, you can use the word proton, no problems. And when you see the word pump, a pump is a type of transport protein that will only carry out active transport. So how are these transport proteins involved in the process of active loading? You see, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw out some hydrogen ions inside the companion cells and I'm also going to draw out some hydrogen ions in the cell wall of the companion cell and the mesophyll cell. You just have to understand that they exist between these two places. Now, so far so good. And then the next thing we just have to talk about is the mesophyll cells. And the mesophyll cells, because they are the source, they will produce the sucrose, which I've represented in the pink triangles, and what the mesophyll cell will do is the mesophyll cell will just transport the sucrose into the cell wall. Now, this is not the process of active loading yet. This is just setting up the stage for active loading to happen. 
So how does the sucrose move all the way to the phloem sieve tube element then? Now, to start the process of active loading, what we have to do is notice what I'm highlighting. I'm actually highlighting the hydrogen ion outside the companion cell and also the hydrogen ion inside the companion cell. And you notice that the concentration of hydrogen ion outside the cell and the concentration of hydrogen ion inside the cell are the same. So what's the big deal for this? Well, the big deal is what exactly will happen here is the companion cell's mitochondrion will produce some ATP and the ATP will provide power or energy to the proton pump. And remember, I told you earlier that the pump carries out active transport. So when the pump, which I've highlighted, when the pump receives ATP, it will pump hydrogen ion from the cytoplasm into the cell wall, as I'm showing you here. Look at the hydrogen ion. They are moving from an area of low concentration to high concentration or against the concentration gradient. That's the first thing that is supposed to happen. So in the exam, you can just say that for process number one in active loading, active transport of hydrogen ion from companion cells to the cell wall occur. And it uses the proton pump. Why is this important? Is because it creates a proton gradient. Now, what do I mean by a proton gradient? Look, the concentration of hydrogen ion outside the companion cell is much higher than the concentration of hydrogen ion inside the cell. So this is now referred to as a proton gradient. So, in this case here, what exactly will happen is the hydrogen ion will diffuse passively down the concentration gradient through the co-transporter molecule, which I've represented in the yellow arrow. But remember, the co-transporter doesn't just transport hydrogen ion. The beautiful thing about this is, as hydrogen ion moves through the co-transporter, one sucrose molecule will also follow at the same time. Another hydrogen ion moves in from high to low concentration and the sucrose also follows. And then the third one, another hydrogen ion goes in and another sucrose molecule follows. You might be thinking, isn't this just like diffusion of sucrose? Why, why does the companion cell go through all this trouble? Here's where it becomes a bit more interesting. Now, look at the concentration of sucrose outside the cell and inside the cell. There are three sucrose outside the cell and there are three sucrose molecules inside the cell. So in this case, diffusion of sucrose is no longer supposed to happen. But the beauty is the hydrogen ion still has a concentration gradient because the outside still has a higher hydrogen ion concentration and the inside has a lower hydrogen ion concentration. So hydrogen ion continues to diffuse through the co-transporter. And as it continues diffusing through the co-transporter, the sucrose molecule follows without bothering about the sucrose concentration gradient. That's what I meant earlier when I said that the hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter only follows the hydrogen ion's concentration gradient. It doesn't care about the sucrose molecule's concentration gradient at all. As long as one hydrogen ion moves through the co-transporter by diffusion down the concentration gradient, a sucrose molecule will automatically follow. And it doesn't have to expend any ATP in this process. So therefore, process number two is hydrogen ion passively diffuses into the companion cell through the co-transporter and takes in sucrose at the same time. And the co-transporter only follows the hydrogen ion concentration gradient. And in this case, of course, the sucrose molecules are now inside the companion cells. They can easily diffuse into the sieve tube element through the plasmodesma. That's how active loading is supposed to take place. Process number one, number two, and number three. So there is active transport of hydrogen ion uh, in the proton pump, but then co-transporter co -transporter molecules will take over to help the sucrose molecules enter the companion cells. So if you're not so sure, let's try this again. So process number one, ATP powers up the proton pump and hydrogen ions are actively transported from the companion cell cytoplasm into the cell wall. This creates a proton gradient where there's a high concentration of hydrogen ion 
in the cell wall and a low concentration of hydrogen ion in the companion cells. And as the hydrogen ion diffuses into the companion cell through the co-transporter, it will take in the sucrose molecules as well. And the sucrose molecules will then diffuse into the phloem sieve tube element through the plasmodesma. That is the entire process of active loading that we have to know.